Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, this is your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, and every now and then I'll get a comment on YouTube from someone saying, Hey Oxhorn, you're a filthy cheater, there's no way you could build these huge settlements without using console commands to generate all sorts of, uh, scrap and wood and concrete and all sorts of stuff in your inventory, you're a filthy cheater. But, the truth is, actually, that I have never used a console command to generate any resources for any of my settlements, uh, aside from doing a demonstration here or there. So the purpose of this video is to show you how I go about scrounging for resources using base vanilla mechanics and no mods and still have enough resources to build the huge sprawling settlements that I do. What we are going to do is I'm going to take you to a dungeon and we're going to go through the entire thing and I'm going to show you exactly how many resources we get at the very end. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how all of this breaks down by individual component, not just junk items, so stay tuned. Now, there are many wonderful long dungeons in Fallout 4, but the one that I'm going to be showing off for this video is Gunner's Plaza, far to the south. This is a sprawling dungeon with two floors, a downstairs basement area, and then an elevator to the very top with gunners and all sorts of wonderful scrap and loot that you can get. Now, my character is level 150-something. I don't even know what, what level she is. And uh, so, obviously, it's going to be much easier for me to clear this dungeon. If your character is in the 20s or 30s, you're not going to be able to do this. But you could certainly do it for the Core Vega assembly plant or some other dungeon. Obviously, it's great to have as much strength as you possibly can. The higher your strength, the higher your carrying capacity. So, obviously, this means that if you have a full set of fortifying armor, that is going to maximize your strength. In fact, at higher levels, if you wear a full suit of fortifying armor, you can carry more scrap on you than you can when wearing power armor. I've found that when you enter a suit of power armor while wearing fortified armor, it actually removes your strength bonus, meaning that wearing power armor can actually decrease the amount of scrap that you can carry. Now, there are a couple of perks that can really help when going around scrounging. The most important one, in my opinion, is strong back. The first level of this gives you plus 25 to carry weight. Uh, the second level gives you plus 50 to carry weight. And then the third level allows you to actually run when you're encumbered. And the fourth level, which is the most important level, allows you to fast travel when encumbered. This fourth level is absolutely essential when trying to get as much as you can from dungeons, because without it, you're gonna have to travel back and forth between dungeons much more often. Even if you're encumbered, you can still loot the dungeon, it just takes a little bit longer, and then you can fast travel everything away. The fifth level of Strongback is really nice. When encumbered, it reduces running cost by 15% uh, fewer action points, which is gonna be helpful when trying to use some special abilities or running away while encumbered. So I, rec I recommend you get all five levels of Strongback. It's a really useful perk. In addition to perks, in addition to armor, think about the aid that you can carry with you. Stock up on some grilled rad stag. This improves your carrying capacity and it lasts for a good long while. You can also use things that increase your strength like uh, whiskey, which increases your strength uh, by one, I believe. And the strong sludge cocktail from Far Harbor is really useful. The strong sludge cocktail increases your strength due to your current radiation level for 12 minutes. So the best way to use this cocktail is to get super irradiated and then pop the cocktail, and this could potentially push your strength way up there. You could also use the Grognak costume. I don't think you can wear it with the fortifying armor, but if you don't have the fortifying armor, the Grognak costume also gives you a couple points of strength, which can help you out. So, before going to a dungeon and scrounging around, just be smart with your perks and your armor and the aid that you bring with you. And then, of course, store absolutely everything you don't need, including your weapon mods. Some people don't realize that the weapon mods actually have weight, so you need to store those in your workshop every time you uh, work on a weapon or you work on a piece of armor. We also tend to carry a lot of unnecessary aid with us, like Blamco mac and cheese or uh, potato crisps or whatever. So just store everything with you you don't need that has any weight whatsoever. 
Once your character is set up, make sure you bring a companion with you that has a lot of strength. So Strong is a great one for this because he can carry a lot. Another good one is Paladin Dance. Um, so grab Strong or Paladin Dance, make sure his inventory is as empty as it can be, and then head to the dungeon of your choice. With this setup, I was able to loot absolutely everything in the first two floors of Gunner's Plaza before Strong's inventory became completely full. After that, I was able to loot the entire basement before my character became encumbered, which meant that all I had to do was take an elevator to the top floor, and I, I had a few moments where I was encumbered for a few times, but the, for, for the majority of this dungeon crawl, I was not encumbered, thanks to this setup. Incidentally, this is a great way to get decorations for your settlements that you can use with the mod OC Decorator, which is sadly only available on PCs. But OC Decorator actually consumes the junk items in your inventory in order to decorate your settlements. So if you want to put Nuka-Cola out there or grilled meats or picture frames or flowers, uh, you can find a lot of this stuff in Gunner's Plaza. Gunner's Plaza is great for this kind of decorations. All right, so we have a bag filled with all sorts of junk. Now, normally you're just gonna dump this in your workshop and you're gonna be good to go, but with this video, I wanna show you exactly the raw components that you can get from one dungeon crawl, just so that you can see how valuable this is. To do that, we're going to use the mod Manufacturing Extended to actually break down all of these junk items into their base components. I have this set up here at Oberland Station, so I'm gonna dump my junk into the hopper, and then we'll just sit back and watch as the recycler breaks everything down. Now, one thing I didn't do is I didn't loot any of the armor or weapons that were on any of the gunners that I killed in Gunner's Plaza. And the reason for that is because they're really heavy. Guns and armor are incredibly heavy, and the resources that they give you are nice, but not all of them are really useful for settlement building. They can be useful for creating weapons, and sometimes you'll get good stuff for settlement building, like wood and steel, but I decided to leave them just because I didn't want to make the extra trip. Now, if you want to scrap absolutely everything, including all of the armor and weapons that you get off of your enemies, then I recommend that you get the Scrapper perk, because the Scrapper perk will allow you to recover more resources from the weapons and armor that you scrap. Now, the Recycler from the Manufacturing Extended mod does not break down weapons and armor. It only breaks down junk. So to get the true benefit from this perk, you're going to need to drop your weapons and armor in your settlement, open workshop mode, and then manually scrap them one by one. Or, of course, you could scrap them in a workbench if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, this took a long time. I went ahead and sped it up for you, but uh, it's done. So let's take a look at everything that we got. Let's check the hopper here, and we've got... 8 acid, 25 adhesive, 39 aluminum, 12 antiseptic, 6 asbestos, 4 ballistic fiber, 17 bone, uh, 48 ceramic, 27 circuitry, 48 cloth, 5 concrete, 36 copper, 4 cork, 12 crystal, 2 fiber optics, 10 fiberglass, 51 gears, 144 glass, 6 gold, 1 lead, 1 leather, 8 nuclear material, 12 oil, 37 plastic, 13 rubber, 31 screws, 22 silver, 39 springs, 172 steel, and 63 wood. Wow! That's a lot of material that we got from one dungeon crawl. I timed it, and this dungeon crawl took me about 35 minutes to do. It wasn't all that long, and I saved a ton of cash. If you tried to replicate everything we got from one run-through of Gunner's Plaza by buying shipments, you'd be out thousands and thousands of caps. 25 pieces of adhesive is 1,800 caps, just to put things in perspective. Of course, the price depends upon your charisma. If you have a higher charisma, then maybe that's not a big deal to you. But uh, as you see, we, we got multiple shipments of adhesive just with one dungeon crawl. Now, there is one caveat to that in that we did not get a lot of lead or fertilizer or concrete. So there are some things that you're not gonna get in every single dungeon, and in those cases, it's good to pick the right dungeon. For example, if you really want aluminum, the Corvaga assembly plant is great because it's got all of those car parts everywhere which scrap down for aluminum. If you want glass, it's good to go to something like the Beantown Brewery where they've got bottles everywhere and you can get tons and tons of glass. I can't think off of the top of my head a great place to go get concrete, uh, but concrete shipments are actually quite common. You can find them from many merchants around the Commonwealth, and it tends to be fairly reasonably priced. 
So let me set the scene. You start playing Fallout 4, you go through every single dungeon, you're a pack rat like me, you're a completionist, you don't want to miss a thing, and after every dungeon you just dump everything in your workshop, and then you connect all those workshops with provisioners so that every, all of your settlements are connected on a supply line, and then you beat the game, you're level 100, you've finished absolutely everything, and now you want to start settlement building, and lo and behold, Due to your efforts, you have more resources than you could possibly ever, ever want to start working on your settlements. And that is the situation I found myself in when I finally started working on settlements after I finished the game. I haven't had to buy a single shipment yet, but I do still go through many dungeons. It's actually kind of nice to break up the monotony of building sett settlements, to do a dungeon every now and then just to stock up on, on a certain number of resources. And as you know from my builds, I very rarely use concrete except to make my artillery platforms, so concrete is one of those resources that I still have in abundance, even though I've never actually purchased a shipment. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that adds a little bit of context as to why I have as many resources as I do. Anyone can rinse and repeat this. It's just taking 30 minutes out of your gaming day to hit one of those big dungeons, bring a companion with you, be smart about it, and loot absolutely everything. You too will get as many resources as you could possibly want to build your awesome, amazing settlements. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video was useful. If you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe for more Fallout 4 content. Your subscriptions keep this channel alive and stay tuned for Vault Tech Workshop. That DLC is coming out in just a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to start making videos for you. So subscribe for more content. Thank you all so much for watching.